Uh, good afternoon, everyone. A uh, little bit nervous. As a coach, it's the first time, you know, using the second language to stand on this stage to present it about the China football. Uh, if you have any further questions, don't be hesitant to ask our, you know, my colleagues. Cindy Guo, she prepared she prepare everything for me to, you know, to talk about. So I just, my job is just to read it. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, on behalf of Chinese Football Association, I would like to thank the FFA for hosting these two friendly games for us. Um, so, all, I think all of you already watched that uh, the, the, the game last night, and uh, the Australia team played very well and they gave a very best performance, you know, for us to learn, and to see, and to evaluate ourselves, you know. So we are looking forward to the next, you know, game in the, in, in where? <coughs> Jilong, in Jilong. <laughs> so, we would also like to thank FFA for inviting us to attend this forum and introduce the football reform that is currently undergoing in China. Uh, as you may have already been aware of, uh, Chinese football has been a hot topic globally in recent years, and one of the key reasons in the football reform starting in 2015 and the series of related rules and the policies issued since then, which has drawn great public interest in developing football in China. So here I would like to take this chance to brief you about the current football development and the reform in our country to give you some more concrete ideas. Am I right? <laughs> Okay, so football in China has become a national strategy and is closely related to the realization of Chinese dream. As the number one sport around the world, football is a highly social, cultural, and international sport. It not only plays an important role in improving people's physical health, but also to promote teamwork and the national unity and the solidarity and to drive to drive economic growth. <laughs> Since the overall reform and the development plan of Chinese football was issued in March 2015, a, spe a special task force had been set up involving 16 ministries of the government, including the General Administration of Sports, the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Finance, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Human Resource, and so on. With our Vice Premier, Premier Madam Liu Yandong Liu as the head of the team to guide and coordinate the reform. Since then, a series of policies have been published. They are the plan of accelerating the youth school football development issued in July 2015, the middle to long-term long development plan of Chinese football from 2016 to 2050, issued in April 2016. The football facilities construction plan of Chinese football since two, from 2016 to 2020. This is issued in May two, 2016. And the CFA action plan 2020, this is issued in January 2017. We have gradually built up the most comprehensive policy framework in the history of Chinese football. Now the task is how to best put them into practice. So next I would like to present the general structure of Chinese football development. First and foremost, the Chinese Football Association is the solo national governing body responsible for football management, promotion, and the development in China. The CFA Congress consists of 47 member associations with 31 provincial, 30 municipal, and three other members. The CFA 
executive committee consists of 19 representatives from governmental sports department, member associations, professional league, specialized, specialized areas, and the public. CFA has 16 committees in, com in compression, in compression uh, areas of competitions, technical referees, youth, women's football, futsal, and the beach soccer, players, media, and the communications, ethics, and the fair play, arbitration, disciplinary, professional league, council, strategic, strategic development, finance, pitches, and equipment, medical, and the social responsibility. The CFA secretary, secretary consists of 15 departments, including President Office, General Administration, Media, Legal and Planning, International Relations, Technical Competitions, National Teams Administration, Women's Football, Women's Youth Lead Training Program, Youth Training, Youth and Youth Lead Training, Grassroots, Marketing and the Professional League Office. Currently, our Secretariat, Secretariat has about 110 members of staff. The Department of Women's Youth Training and the Youth Training was nearly established this September, which have taken over the youth training related tasks of the Women's Department and the Youth Department, respectively. This also suits our aims to strengthen the youth training and the talent identification across the country. I will explain, uh, I will explain a little a bit in details later in terms of our youth training structures for female players. Uh, so CSA company has 20 people and the CFIDC, this is CFA marketing, so responsible for the marketing and the competitions operation of Team China event has around 60 people. So according to the above mentioned uh, policies, we have divided the goals into three terms. In the short term, from 2016 to 2020, uh, our objectives are to improve, to improve the development environment and the basic infrastructure to plan and uh, st strategize, strategize. In the middle term, from 20, from 2021 to 2020, we are aiming at <laughs> stabilizing and uh, optimizing the organizational structure and the management system with evident increase of football population and a significant improvement in competition's performance. In the long term, from 2031 to 2050, our goals are that football becoming a highly common practice in social, cultural, and commercial activities to neutral the football culture of wide public participation and significant global influence and competitiveness. In the past, we focused too much on short-term results and learned our lessons. So now the planning should be more scientific and focus on long-term effects. In the CFA Action Plan 2020, we have I identified the three aims. One is cultural development, to promote football to the wider public, to nurture a football-friendly society, and to benefit the people's health and well-being. Second, organizational development, to improve football governance and to strengthen football management of our levels, of all levels. Three, business development to establish a sound football development system and enlarge the football population and improve the performance. The policies has highlighted the main aspect of football reform, including the management structure of MAs, the construction of competition system, the development of professional leagues, school football and the grassroots amateur football, the training of professional personnel, 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 national teams, facilities, and uh, infrastructure, funding, 
and marketing and international communications. So now I would like to present a few points in more details. First, in terms of infrastructure, uh, infra infrastructure <laughs> by 2020, 60,000 pages of all kinds will be built, including 40,000 in school and 20,000 in communities. Two new national training centers will be built. Two. The, regarding the population of football, we will make full use of schools, communities, and all kinds of organizations to promote football. We will establish the national football registration and the event management pl platform and support the establishment of amateur clubs and the youth clubs. By 2020, the registered youth players is to reach 1 million, including 100,000 female players and the registered population of all levels to reach 5 million. We are actively cooperating with FIFA and the AFC with projects like such as uh, you, may know that uh, Live Your Goals, Women's Football Day for F, uh, of AFC to promote uh, women's football and encourage more girls to take up football. So we are aiming at building a comprehensive competition structure with multiplied ties from CSL, League One, League Two, League Three, which is uh, amateur league, to regional leagues and the local MS event. So currently in men's football, we have CSL, League One, League Two, and the CFA Cup. In women's football, we have women's super league, women's league, and uh, the youth league. Uh, in 2016, our amateur leagues covers 44 MAs with nearly 30,000 teams and 400,000 people participating in, the, in this event. So the next slide is talking about uh, men's football. I don't, I, we can skip it, <laughs> if you want. <laughs> if you want to, yeah, we can. <laughs> One, two, three, please. OK. So. In terms of the female game, it did not expand as quickly as the men's game. In 2015, the reform league system was introduced with two tie league, women's super league and the women's league one, each with eight teams. So uh, 14 rounds, total of 56 matches per season. By the end of the season, the last, te the last team of super league will be relegate to the League One and the first of League One will be promoted. The second the last of Super League will play a playoff with the second of the League One to de determine the final sport of the both leagues. Apart from the leagues, we also organized centralized tournaments like Women's CFA Cup and the Women's Championship for these 16 teams and the Women's Super Cup in the final match of each season with the champion of the Super League playing against the champion of the championship. We also organize national youth series training camps and the tournament. Currently, the age groups are under 14, under 16, and under 18. At present, women's football in China still rely heavily on the support of the local sports bureau. Among these 16 clubs, only a few are professional clubs. The rest are either cooperation between sports bureau and the enterprise or managed by the sports bureau. And if a girl wants to take up football as a hobby, they can play in school or attend some private clubs. And if they want to take up football more seriously, they can choose to attend the sports school, which are linked to the local sports bureau. And as they grow up, if they are good enough, they can choose by the clubs to take football more serious. So the player's pathway is quite narrow, narrow and the talent pool is still small. That's the basic reason that we would like to reform the structure of youth and the grassroots training to establish the women's youth training department, which I will touch upon a bit in details later. So for the school of football, by 2020, 20,000 football specific schools are to, build, to be built and 50,000 full-time and part-time foot, football coaches are to be trained. This task is belong to the, you know, our, our educational bureau. 
national, national administration of education. Okay, the next. So training of professional pers personnel, the lack of professional personnel negatively affecting our development. So therefore, by 2020, our objectives are to have 70,000 licensed coaches. The current number is 20,000. So 30,000 licensed referees. The current number is 18,000. 60 CFA full-time instructor, 120 CFA part-time instructors, 60 full-time instructors in MAs, 50 national referee instructors, and the 35 referee finished instructor. We also plan to build or certified 2, 000, uh, 200 youth training centers nationwide. Currently, the number is 43. So in regards to the women's youth training department, they have identified their major goals and the tasks. First of all, to set up the three level, city, provincial, and the nation, national, national. Women's youth training center structure and the Shanghai and the Suzhou have been chosen to conduct a pilot project in 2018. Secondly, appoint one national and two to four regional women's youth training directors. And the city and the provincial, provincial youth training centers should also appoint their own directors at the CFA will provide subside, subsidies once approved. To design the new car, 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 curriculum <laughs> of youth training based on previous lessons and the international experience to build up comprehensive data management system for youth training of female players by the end of 2018. Organize elite and the grassroots coach training seminars inviting inviting national and international instructors. Thirdly, establish comprehensive competition system with local, regional, and national training camps, championships, and the leagues within and among youth training centers. Fourthly, enlarge talent pools and the scout for youth series national team to prepare for AFC and the FIFA championships. Well, this is just a brief introduction of how we work what we are aiming at and how we are going to make it happen. Hope it can help you better understand our effort in football development and, the promo and promotion. The women football in China is recovering as we got quick, quite good results in the Canada World Cup and the Royal Olympics, which has drawn quite a lot of attention and the public interest. But there's still a lot, lot more work to do if we want to return to the top and during the, this process, we needed to open up our mind and learn from international experience. We sincerely hope to continue this kind of exchanges with our counterparts, counterparts like Football Federation Australia to promote women's football in our countries and beyond. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>